You know, I was given three to six months to live with terminal cancer, and God gave me a way of escape. And I put that story in this book, and Dale and I co-wrote this, about what we went through when we experienced the battle of cancer. This is a great experience for you to learn beforehand if you don't have cancer now. Be prepared because this, these are full of Bible principles that help you walk in healing. And there's a 30-day Jumpstart Your Health plan that comes with the book. So enjoy that as well as a free gift. It's from Philip. And he wrote an email saying, I see, I'm seeing a lot of videos online about prophecies for the coming year, and sometimes they don't even reference the Bible. I'm really troubled about these. I want to be a good Christian and try and study the word, but what are we to make of prophecies where folks claim to have visions or messages from God? In my view, if it isn't reflected in the word, it shouldn't be trusted. What are your thoughts? So he's asking us our opinion. He's sharing his opinion. What is your opinion? And let's talk about this, and we have five minutes. Here we go. Let's see if we can do it. Okay, Philip, great question. I love the way you're cautioning, uh, even in your question. Well done, sir. We need to be very cautious. Jesus said in Matthew 24, Luke 21, Mark chapter 13, when he was talking about the last days, and we're in them now, in our mm -hmm. opinion, mm -hmm. If we're in the last days right now, even more so when Jesus said, take heed that no one deceive you. Now in aviation, when something was important, it was going to be on a test. We would sometimes say it twice or three times. So I'm going to say it again, what Jesus said, take heed that no one deceive you. Don't let anyone deceive you because... And that's anyone, any person... And who is Satan going to use primarily in the church? Well, he's going to use people in the church. Mm -hmm. Hello. <laughs> That's the way the battle mm -hmm. or strategies work. It's always been that way. It will always be that way. There are so many plants, plants in the church that it's, Phenomenal. I'm going to give a number that I shared with you yesterday. There's about 40,000 professional airline pilots in America. Okay, just wrap your mind around 40,000 people in an industry. These are pilots, men and women, professional. How many plants, paid plants, are probably in the church in America alone? She asked me this, and I said, minimum 500,000. We're talking about a massive plan of deception. You must be careful. Be careful. You seem to agree yesterday when I said I that. I totally agree because we're seeing it everywhere. We hear from people constantly of what Satan has just done in their church, who has just infiltrated their church, what has just occurred. Satan is at work. He, his whole kingdom is operating in this world. He's the God of this world. He's in charge of this world. So temporarily until Jesus comes and displaces him, he is running the show. And do you think he's not sending people into the churches? His arch enemy is godly people. He is sending his people into the churches to attack stealthily, to infiltrate and undermine and coerce and, de and deceive. It, it doesn't take any effort at all for someone to get a camera and get on YouTube and say that God said and then come up with something that will confuse or or uh, di um, diffuse, or direct, misdirect, misinformation. I mean, this is just constant. You must be super, super careful. There are four things that I think that I use when I'm trying to discern what's from God and what is not. It's important, though, that you know that when, from God's perspective, from heaven's view, when someone gives a prophecy that God say, says something, Thus saith the Lord, that person that speaks that ought to be willing 
to die if they're wrong. Because in the Old Testament, that's what would happen. Mm -hmm. Why should it be different? We should have just as much respect for speaking on behalf of God as mm -hmm. they did in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. that if they were incorrect, they would actually forfeit their life. That's right. Okay, there are a few things that I'm willing to say that I'm willing to put my life on the line. But I'll tell you what, the people that are making these YouTube videos or other ram uh, ramble video, whatever you call them out there, rumble, okay, uh, the, no one has any accountability. There's no penalty for being wrong. I have seen it my entire adult life. Here's the four things to look for. When someone gives a prophecy, make sure that that prophecy is in line with God's word. You have to know the Bible. You have to know what's in it. You have to understand it so you can immediately recognize what's false. Study your Bible mm -hmm. with your heart mm -hmm. and an alert mind a little bit every day. If you eat food, then have, have your spiritual food, which is reading your Bible with a good translation. Number two is make sure that when you hear of a prophecy, there's our timer, <laughs> or what are we gonna do? Make sure that the prophecy is in line with the spirit of Jesus, the way Jesus would have acted, the way Jesus would have uh, condoned. Nothing is going to be from God if it would be against what Jesus taught, mm -hmm. what Jesus did, the way Jesus taught us to think. Because Jesus and God, they're basically one and the same, in a sense. Their, their word is the same. Their motive is always the same. Thirdly, third, is make sure that the Spirit of God is witnessing to what's being said. If something is being said from God, it will line up, number one, with the word. It'll line up, number two, with what Jesus taught and how he lived. And number three, it'll line up with the spirit of God. And you'll need to be in tune with that spirit every day. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The Holy Spirit will help you overcome the flesh. The Bible also says walk in the spirit. Uh, and that is basically talking about being, it's talking about being filled with the spirit, which is being filled and filled and filled. It's a, it's a verb tense that never ends. Continual. So it's Continual. A, 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 you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit in a sense every day. Absolutely. And go to God, repent of anything that is not pleasing to him. Make sure you repent. That's important. That's very important. Oh my gosh, there's so much to say. <laughs> but okay, walk in the spirit. Make sure everything that you hear is witnessing to your spirit. And fourthly, and this is, I'm adding this, but I think it's important. Check the motivation. Someone could actually be saying something in line with God. For example, healing. And it would be in line with what Jesus did. Jesus would do healing. And it would be... Uh, possibly miss, you may have mis, uh, discerned it. Not everyone has the gift of discernment, and uh, that's abundantly clear. But there are some people that are actually making a living, going around doing something, saying something. It's not what God called them to do, but they're making a good living doing it, and the sheep are just lost. Verify what I often do is, is this motivation, is there sacrifice in it? And if there isn't any sacrifice in it, sometimes I add that to the list of the other three and those four lining up together make it very easy to determine when it's of God and when it's not. This is a lesson of grace. We've gone two and a half minutes over five minutes. You're under grace. <laughs> thank god thank god for grace and mercy and my gosh you know ezekiel who was an awesome prophet um 
he, he prophesied, he said, her, her princes in her midst are like wolves tearing the prey. That's, that's the false prophets. To shed blood, to destroy people, and to get dishonest gain. That's what Dale's talking about, getting dishonest gain. Destroying people's lives through false information, false uh, words. Her prophets plaster them with untempered mortar, seeing false visions and dividing lies for them, saying... These false prophets say, thus says the Lord God, when the Lord hadn't spoken. So Ezekiel saying the Lord didn't speak, but they're saying, thus says the Lord. So they're speaking from their own fleshly desires or their own false visions and saying, God said this and, and they didn't. So Ezekiel's prophesying this. We have to know that this is part of the culture that we're in, especially in these last days. We're living in a fallen kingdom run by lies. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. And when it's of God, it'll always lift up Jesus. It'll always lift up the Lord Jesus. It'll always lift up God. If you have yet to buy this book, Visiting Heaven, which is Dale's latest book on his experience of being the only survivor of an airplane crash and a visit to heaven, do it today. It is now uh, ranging in the top uh, 25 Christian books uh, for sales. It's, it is flying off the shelves. People love it. Buy it for a loved one if you've already got your own copy. Buy it for someone you know will benefit from reading it. If you've read it, you know how powerful this book is. So enjoy it and share it. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Make sure that you check out the donation page at uh, daleblack.org to see these videos continue. If you like what we're doing, why not consider supporting us with your tithes and offerings for the Lord Jesus Christ? So that's it for today. This is Dale and Paula Black reminding you once again that with God, nothing is impossible. We'll see you next time.